Sir, we are live. Good evening to all. This is Chandra Mohan, Ortho Physiotherapist from Sri Samraj Physiotherapy Center, Delhi, Vanam, Tamil Nadu. A warm welcome to all the participants in Zoom meeting and Fitness and Rehab India YouTube channel for the EXRX India and Sri Samraj Health Services Private Limited presenting Webathon, a web series enthusing for the world record in association with. Dr. Rupesh Pickle Studio, Dr. Arna Chalams, Sairam Academy, Chennai, and Dusa Creations, West Bengal, and powered by Dr. Vandada Sheshan's Stimulus Physiotherapy and Fitness Clinic, Pune, Maharashtra, India. EXRX India's 162nd topic is Functional Manipulation for Fine, will be presented by Dr. V. Jagadishan, MPT Ortho, Founder and Managing Director of JK Physio and Rehab Clinic, Chennai. I welcome EXRX India team members, Dr. Rupesh and uh, Professor Duna, and I welcome our associate, Dr. Vangadashish, for this session. And now I welcome our resource person, Dr. Jagadishan, and request him to commence the session. Dr. Jagadishan, please. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Yeah. Please do the screen sharing now. Yeah, I'm just I'm Dr. Technician here. Uh, uh, I'm running my clinic, uh, JK Physio in uh, Chennai for last uh, 12 years. So I'm very much appreciating this team for conducting this webathon. That is, uh, they're running a, uh, trying to, uh, they are doing their best to conduct a world record. Definitely they will do it. So let me go to the uh, today's topic, functional manipulation on spine. I hope everybody is audible, right? So let me share the screen. Yes. So everybody know that uh, yes, in the physiotherapy field, we have a number of manipulation techniques, Mulligan, Maitland, McKenzie, Sigax. These techniques are specific techniques which is based upon their founder. They will be manipulating as per the condition. But this functional manipulation, spine manipulation is totally different uh, based upon the functional assessment and the requirement. That is, as we assess the spine under the different means, as per that, we want to decide the, decide the functional management. So that is the difference between this manipulation of Syriacs and other topics. So we know about this Maitland, Mulligan, McKenzie, Syriacs. So I will say how this functional manipulation is totally different apart from this condition manipulation and this MFRP techniques, trigger point release, counter strain, muscle energy technique and neural mobilization. These all techniques are uh, conventional and other uh, techniques, they will be correlated with the other ultra therapies. But this function manipulation is specific about the joints and spines. We can do even for some other manipulation technique, they simply do for uh, spine alone. For a Maitland, they will do alone on the joints as per the high velocity thrust and thrust. But this technique, function manipulation technique, first we want to assess the deformities or the dysfunction or the alignment problems. So, this is the difference between the other techniques and our functional manipulation techniques. Right? I hope everybody is. Uh, the, uh, the anatomical trains, this is the major uh, topic we want to discuss in the functional manipulation. So, we know that uh, as a physiotherapist, we have a number of trains, that is, number of chains. We say trains, the chains, that is, the anterior train, uh, posterior train, and lateral train, and functional train. So, when we do the other manipulation techniques, they mostly use anterior, lateral and posterior trains. But in this condition, in this technique, functional uh, uh, manipulation, we go more on the functional chains. That is, example, uh, you know that a fascia is linked from the vertex till the toes. So, if you want to manipulate the tensor fascia later, Usually, as a trigger point uh, practitioner, they will manipulate or they will trigger, release a trigger point over the TFL or the IT band. 
but in our function manipulation, we want to treat from the lattice mass torsi, gluteus maximus, then uh, TFA. So this is the difference. So we want to know the assessment first based upon the functional terms. Before uh, going for assessments, we want to uh, discuss about some uh, important thing for which conditions, which dysfunctions we can go for functional manipulation. It is safe enough to do, like as I say, short uh, duration pain, local or uh, spinal pain, muscular pain, spinal dysfunction, sacroiliac dysfunctions, and the spinal or peripheral joints. So these things we can directly go to the manipulation. In case the patients have pessimistic attitude towards pain. We should we should be aware. Generalized pain over the spine. Previous episodes of back pain, patient pain, psychological stress pain, early morning sickness without any referral pain, maybe uh, from Besara. So these conditions we should be aware. We should be, uh, should be uh, safe enough to do the manipulation. The final one, red flag. In these conditions you should not manipulate. Any any manipulation should not be done. Like burst fractures, core cases, vascular compromise, motor claudications, and severe sensory claudications, osteoporosis, hemangioma, trauma, old fractures, or recent fractures, dislocation, and recent surgeries and implantation of the spine, like decompression surgery. So, these three points you want to keep in mind before starting assessing the patient. You want to get these details apart again. Generalization and local. So, the assessment area where you are going to treat that is centralization. Peripheral. So, we want to go that is a uh, centralization example if the patient has a shoulder problem. You want to assess the whole core area. Peripheral. That is, you want to assess the proximal, the distal. It is local, you want to assess. Then you know about spinous process. What I mentioned is spinous parts, spinous process, articular pillars, mammillary pillars, and transverse pillars. These processes are very important in case of manipulations. You should know the uh, surface anatomy of this area. Then, spine property test usually we do the present. Then, 30 minutes in other real patient data. So, it will be helpful for you how I manipulate the real patient. So, here, you still are local. So, here I am showing that peripheral local that the patient may have a tenderness or a nodule or a stiffness or a dysfunction of the particular transverse process or uh, uh, myofascial tightness that is because of the traits. Here, use the shoulder points, even with the cervical and the actual so As for this, we want so this concept based upon this concept, we are doing the functional management. Sir, can you hear? Sir, please uh, reshare your screen. Unmute him. Please unmute your mic, sir. Yes. Uh, please switch off your video. I think you have poor signal. That's why we are getting voice issues. You can share only the uh, uh, PPT. Sir, unmute your mic, please. Yes, please. Now the share the PPT now. Share your screen, sir. So, we know when is this? Yes. Thank you. 
I think you have a signal issues. Yes, good. Okay, now please. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay, but still we have audio. Uh, uh, it's not clear. Please talk for two or three lines. Bye, please. Okay. Is it audible now? I'll connect. Yes. Mobile device. No, actually, you don't have a proper. Good, right? uh, not clear. Not clear. Uh, audio is not clear. The laptop is not receiving the Wi Fi. Okay, I'll do it. If you have a phone, you can use phone. Uh, you can use the laptop for uh, screen sharing and you can talk uh, with us uh, through the phone. He got disconnected again, I think. Maybe he will do some uh, other arrangements. Yes. Dear participants, please wait for two or three minutes. Yeah, he is connecting with the mobile. He will come now, join within two or three minutes. Please wait. Rupesh, I will ask him to send the PPT also. Thank you, Arokya Raja. Yeah, fine, sir. Fine. Uh, yes.
Rupesh and Duna, madam, I have sent the, his PPT in uh, WhatsApp. Please download it and keep it ready. Yes, right. Can I share it or uh, let him share? Sir? Yeah, you can share it. Share it. Keep it ready so he will be joining. In case uh, if, if he needs to run his PPT, then we can uh, stop screen sharing. Fine, sir. Fine. I think he has joined. Please check, unmute him or uh, do. Uh... So let me share the video, uh, PPT, or are you sharing? Because mobile is good, I think. I'm sharing it, sir. Okay, fine. Sir, can you see, sir? Yes, yes, sir. I am able to see. Yeah. Is this slide, sir, left, sir? No, no, actually, go, go from the first. Not this one. Ah, yes, he was in this slide only, actually. He was explaining. And you are talking, talk, ah, yes, these two slides only. As our resource person joined? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think I ah yes. You can go for you can go for the slide from assessment, sir. Yes, uh, we will be doing uh, screen sharing. When you need to go for the next slide, you just say it. Next slide, please, so that uh, we will. So when you are when you are explaining the uh, case presentation, we no, don't need this uh, slide sharing actually. Like, yeah, yes, so yes. That actually, uh, been available in uh, YouTube. Yeah, big, actually, the patient has came, so we'll start the assessment. Okay. Then uh, with the patient. Yeah, Then yeah. we'll go for slides. Good. Right? Yeah. I think it's visible, right? Yes. So, actually, uh, actually, you have a problem of uh, uh, shoulder dysfunction. Uh, the patient has already a whole history of uh, uh, left side uh, dysfunction. Now he is mobilized last month. His complete range of motion is achieved actually. So, so this is the actual range of motion, but he's a uh, cricket player. But now we have a problem over the right side. Flexion is good. This abduction is painful. Sorry. So this is the maximum abduction with Actual rotation, yeah. So when we do internal rotation, the patient have a capsular uh, stiffness, pain to come. So when you go for uh, internal rotation, unable to do, yeah. Okay, this is the actual, we do clinical assessment actually in this point. But in functional assessment, we are going to do different assessment. The patient range of motion is flexion is good. The abduction is a problem. We know that the scapular human rhythm is a problem. But we are not going to treat the scapular humor rhythm. I'm going to treat over the transverse process of the spine. Okay. So first we'll assess this transverse process. Sir, me know the motif for the Neil come. Neil, Neil, call him. Neil, Neil, Neil. Ah, yeah. Open the back of the back of Yes. Okay. So first we're going to check for the thoracic, cervical, and thoracic, and lumbar. So these three uh, spinal process we are going to assess. Sir, we on the touch point. Okay. 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 Okay.
கால தொங்க போட்டா எப்ப எப்ப ஒரு <laughs> so tala id sariya so the pain iruka so we have a stiffness over the <coughs> lateral flexors ha huh? pain iruka pain illa okay now we have uh, come to know that we have a cervical flexion is restricted now we going to check for this thorax so mutti kodu vena at least normal mutti kodu vena so la ukkara vena mutti kodu kaal kee thonga unda mutti kodu ha okay okay போ <laughs> No. It is easier for them. Mm. In the back, that's a mark. So he says that the mid thorax left rotation is very difficult. So we are going to assess now with thorax. So we want to go now locally. Now you are assessed universally on thorax spine. Now local thorax spine we want to assess. After this manipulation, the shoulder abduction will decrease. So perfect. Straight up. Mobile. Upper. Power contact. so so going to palpate over the spinous process then the transverse process from the t4 level t4 level we are going to assess this. so when the patient says pain or restriction we are going to manipulate that i going to manipulate after the assessment directly okay the question on the mark process so so i will explain why he has a pain first we will manipulate the patient so your patient have t7 transverse process left transverse process is poked and t7 sorry t6 t7 spinous process is poked so first i want to treat the t7 so then we want to treat the t6 then we check the shoulder range of motion okay the so deep breath one Okay. Oh, pain. Pain is it? So audible, right? Yes, audible. Yeah. Okay. Pain in the level. So the pain is reduced after the poking is stuck inside. Okay. Even in the current. Slow, slow, slow. Call it in the corner. So now... we just raise both shoulders pain iruka so right side a little bit okay so initially before assessing he unable to do the shoulder abduction now by mobilizing the transverse process and spinous process he can do that a small pain da le romba periya pain illa okay now he can do the abductions so i am not treated date the shoulder only i have treated the spinous process just like ipo madu thukku sir fine nala thukku na valiyirukka 
the problem the patient came with the problem of uh, uh, shoulder but we are mobilized over the thoracic spine the patient shoulder abduction is increased in a single sitting the patient have a severe supraspinatus tear and he have a ac joint arthropathy the two conditions is there and he have a, a excess amount of uh, fluid accumulation over the bursitis area so, uh, subdeltoid bursitis area so these are the problem he have but With the, with the, even though they have some pathologies in the shoulder, by mobilizing the scapula and mobilizing the spinous process, we will get maximum range of motion. Then we want to go for the root problem, that is the shoulder area. So this is the strength of uh, uh, functional manipulation. So now you can go for the assessment slide. Kindly change the slide. this slide sir you want me to go previous or is it in this slide sir sir from this slide or i need to go little back sir i think this slide only no oh, actually i am not able to see the slide uh yeah, you can go for that uh, uh, assessment so yeah i am in the assessment slide only sir centralization preference <coughs> local are these slides not visible for you again sir is interrupting sir he can sit where he was treating patient at that time that was clear actually sir yes so can you see sir no i am able to see the slide so you are using mobile or laptop sir no i am using mobile only sir again here your network is interrupting sir in this place oh okay you are we were treating the patient go and sit there that is the uh, very good uh, area for the signal sir will you call him yeah yeah i will call him
Very sorry for that because uh, because of power. No problem, no problem. Please carry on. Okay. So now the as I explained in the uh, patient model that uh, we want to assess central and peripheral local. Uh, so we have assessed that shoulder we have assessed locally. Then peripheral we have assessed the scapula. Then centralized we have assessed the whole spine. So as in the, as in, since we are treating the patient, we want to go for a short. Assessment, but actually, when you as as per protocol, if you want to assess, you want to assess the shoulder, complete range of motion, all the muscles, then you want to go for a, a scapular rhythm, then you want to go for a spinal, and a, a proximal uh, atlantic axial joint till the coccyx. We want to assess, then you want to treat all the areas like centralization, central part, peripheral part, and local part. Uh, okay, I can change the slide, sir. Next slide. How do you explain about this? Uh, next slide. Next, next. We can go for a next uh, assessment. Next, next, next. Ah, uh, yeah. As I said, we assess the cervical, right? Cervical uh, flexion. We are checking for, but you should not open the mouth when you check. Next slide. So again, uh, extension. You want to check lateral flexion, lateral flexion, lateral rotation. Next, next, next. Everything should be assessed. Since I explained everything in the model. Next one. Next. So lumbar, torso lumbar. That is multi-segmental flexion. You want to check. In that, the arch should be there. If it is not, we want to treat. Example, if it's a flat box, we want to treat that. Next. So extension is poor here. So he is, comp is compensating the leg movements. Uh, again, segmental rotation. Next. Segmental rotation. Next, so we can go for a previous slide. Segmental rotation. In this, we can see that uh, he is uh, compensating the flat is uh, support. The knee rotation, tibial rotation, tibial torsion is there. Femoral uh, rotation is there. Is pelvis and is thoracic lumbar region. Everything is rotating. So to arrange this, next slide. We can go for the. Next slide. We can go for this assessment. What are the patient unable to do because of this? We want to on the uh, thoracic lumbar. Lumbar we want to arrest by this question. Only the, no no go for that. Only the thoracic movement should be uh, done with this question. The kneeling kneel sitting question. So we want to check which which range of motion is unable to do. That opposite uh, transverse process will be in a problem. Over the thoracic, thoracic region, so we want to go for a local assessment of uh, thoracic stances and the mammary stances and the spinal process. Then we want to manage. It. I already explained with the patient those things. Next slide. So this is uh, what I'm not done in the patient. Actually, we want to do this. We want to treat from the cervical. What I'm doing is I'm increasing in the patient that have a problem over the cervical rotation. This is cervical manipulation technique. Functional manipulation technique. It will be totally different from the Mulligan and the Mackenzie and the Maitland technique. It should be totally different. Totally different. Here, uh, which range of motion you want to enhance? That range of motion fascia should be pulled up, and we want to give thrust over the vertebral body. I am showing the uh, I am showing the marking where the we want to give the thrust actually. Next slide. So here, yeah, this this technique I have shown with the patient for a citizen. The one, what is the second uh, second picture is for the uh, spinous process. We are pushing down that is poking spinous process. And the first uh, first picture is for the rotatory uh, thrust, which is given over uh, the right hand to step over the elevated uh, transverse process of the dysfunctioned uh, thoracic vertebral body. The opposite side should be the adjacent, that is next vertebral body. So we can. Give a thrust to the particular uh, affected thoracic part. That is, the thoracic will be lifted. Thoracic vertebral body will be lifted like this. So we want to thrust it down, and we want to rotate. That's what I'm doing there. Next slide. So this one is the same method uh, which I done for the spinous uh, spinous process. The second method where we can increase the thoracic flexion. You can see that I'm uh, lifting the patient and giving the thrust over the. Below thoracic spinal process. 
spinal stenosis so that will increase the flexion and exactly how exactly over the spinal process will increase the extension of the patient this will be the question for the mobilization next this is for a, a patient who has a cervical lumbar dysfunction we want to treat the ql the quadriceps lumborum so mostly the patient have a functional scoliosis when the patient have a rotator dysfunction non flexion dysfunction they have a stool tightness for that we used to do a opening of spine that is i'm just opening the forearm where i fix over the uh, ilium and over the 12th rib we're just opening the fascia to increase the ql length next So this one we are uh, we are treating in case the patient have a problem over the lumbar. Uh, uh, so initially I said right, there will be a uh, want to mobilize over the dysfunctional, non-painful area. If the patient have a lower lumbar pain, but we consider as a dysfunctional, painful area, we should not treat actually. Dysfunctional, painful area we should not treat. But we can check over the thoracic or a sacrum. there may be a dysfunctional non painful area first we want to treat then we want to go for a lumbar meantime the lumbar uh, soft tissue should be elongated and the bone will give a space to mobilize meantime the lumbar will convert as a non dysfunctional sorry dysfunctional non painful area then we want to go for this methodology lumbar specific opening that is for l3 and l4 l4 l5 what are may be the adjacent vertebral body should be mobilized and open the general technique i want to open whole cervical lumbar to the sacrum we want to twist the body that mostly the all spinal uh, spinal manipulation uh, practitioners and chiropractors uh, chiropractor everybody will do this method but this method will help you to reduce pain instantly when the patient have only dysfunction non painful okay next slide so this one everybody know that the coccyx is a very important uh, bone where the patient have pain and uh, other dysfunctions are responsible because all the ligamentous flare and all the uh, hypertrophy happens because of this coccyx uh, problem so we are going to treat the coccyx from the outside one method we can treat via the inserting the uh, via approaching via the rectal or we can treat outside the rectal approach uh, the, the practitioner showing that how we can go inside the rectal and you want to apply next slide so this will be a uh, method we can treat uh, externally the coccyx uh, we want to mobilize the sacrum along with that we want to uh, fix the coccyx and we want to make the patient to mobilize that is we want to do a anterior and posterior pelvic tilt but the coccyx should be fixed in our uh, finger next this one uh, simple method coccyx and sacrum is mobilized so if the patient have a anterior pelvic tilt the sacrum and the coccyx will be lifted that is over the posterior aspect that should be done by this method we want to give a gentle press but the patient you want to be sure that the patient don't have any fracture or dislocation of coccyx joint then you can go for the manipulation in this method next slide so this one is a sacroiliac method sacroiliac method i'm just mobilizing the sacroiliac joint to reduce the compression force what i'm giving reduce the inflammatory change that is compression and decompression methods will be done for a sacroiliac it should be done over the non painful sacroiliac joint that is example the patient have a right side sacroiliac problem we want to do with the left side sacroiliac joint next so i as i said the full manipulation as a part alone we want to keep patient from the torso tibial to the cervical occipital so every patient whatever the patient have a problem we want to manipulate them from tibial femoral via torso ulna radio ulna femoral scapula cervical dorsal then cervical occipital so you want to go in this methodology to manipulate the patient to get a complete recovery so we can maintain the functional trains in proper alignment next so then you want to act on a patient you want to do for activation coarctation and rhythm and flexibility endurance and strength training this should be done to maintain the availed uh, gained range of motion that's all
Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody have a doubt? Yes, please. Uh, we will ask the participants now. Dear <laughs> participants, if there is any doubt, you can raise questions. Dear participants, any questions? Contraindications to manipulation from Prachi Dubey. The question is from Dr. Prachi Dubey. What are the contraindications of manipulation? As I, as I said, yeah, as I already discussed about that, uh, we have uh, posted a slide of uh, red flag. Red flag uh, slides, everybody, everything is contraindicated that the patient have old history of, uh, history of osteoporosis, uh, there will be a severe uh, uh, radiating pain, <clears throat> motor claudications, sensory claudication is not a problem, motor claudication, uh, then uh, uh, disco, that is uh, complete uh, herniated disc or sublux, that is lithosis, uh, then we can go for myelopathy, myelomalacia, these are the major contraindications and any post-surgery for the spinal cord, these are the contraindications for any manifestation, spine manifestation. Okay, thank you. The next question is from uh, Chinu, coccyx manipulation in which case we can give? Coccyx manipulation, as, as I said, you want to do you want to do for all the lumbar, thoracic and thoracic conditions, even for sacroiliac conditions. Because all the ligaments and the sacrotubular ligaments, all the major ligaments is attached to the coccyx and sacro region. So definitely you want to do coccyx for all the surrounding areas like sacrum, sacroiliac pain, thoracic, lumbar pain, hip pain, for everything and exclusively for the coccygeal dysfunction and the coccydynia also, we can do that. But not for coccyx uh, instability, we can't do that. Okay, thank you. From the next question is from Abdili Motarwala. Can you please put the green flags for manipulation again? He wants us uh, to teach uh, green flags again. Yeah, okay, can share the slide. And uh, along with that, from Dr. Neelima, can you explain yellow flags of manipulation? You can yeah. go for both green and yellow flags. Yeah. So, green flag, there will be a short duration of pain. Definitely, we can go. The patient have acute pain. The acute pain means it should not be a traumatic uh, pain. It should be a short duration pain of because of muscle spasm. Local or a spinal pain. It should be only local and any muscular pain. The patient will not have any dysfunction. Only the pain will be there. Uh, then spinal dysfunction, there will be no pain. Only the spinal dysfunction, the patient unable to move. Then sacral dysfunction also, the patient unable to move the sacral joint, but the pain will be less. Spinal or peripheral joint, myofascial pain. The same. The spinal or peripheral, any myofascial pain, the patient uh, paying over the area of the particular local area that we can consider as a pain flag. Yellow flag. Sir, you are not audible. Yeah. I think he is disconnected. Okay, yes. let's wait.
ஒருத்தர்ஷனல் <laughs> dysfunctional non painful area okay so first you want to treat that then you want to convert all the dysfunctional painful area into dysfunctional non painful area then you want to manipulate so it is considered as a yellow flag previous episodes of back pain so the patient comes with number of episodes they may treated with number of uh, conventional treatments like uh, tractions laser whatever maybe they will maybe not explain the conditions you may they may not have records of previous problem so we want to assess properly then you want to go ahead for the spinal manipulation facial pain the facial pain if the patient have only a facial dysfunction is not a problem the patient have a severe facial facial arthropathy or any neural claudication over the facial region we should be very careful that it may it may be a motor claudication or it may be a sensory claudication so we want to check properly before manipulating that so we want to be aware while treating this patient but we can manipulate with some precautionary thing psychological stress pain that will not help here yeah, but the you want to uh, you may manipulate the patient may say that the pain is not suppressed so we want to uh, convince the patient uh, what you are doing and you want to explain and you should be very careful on treating a psychological patient early morning sickness without any residual pain some visra if there is any visceral pain definitely you don't handle the uh, patient for spinal manipulation so early morning sickness is not a problem without any referral pain you should be there if any referral pain don't attend the patient from the visceral organ 24 to 7 abdominal pain 24 to 7 pelvic floor pain definitely don't handle the pain patient for a manipulation so these conditions are comes under the yellow flag okay the next question is from preeti please tell about counter nutation and nutation glide okay counter nutation and nutation that is the what i said for the sacral uh, uh, gliding that is a patient have a anterior pelvic tilt the scapula will be going over the anterior that is the patient the scapula will be going the anterior uh, and superior that is anterior superior so mean time we want to mobilize the scapula that is over the postero inferior or the apex of the scapula uh, apex sorry apex of the uh, uh, sorry sacrum sorry very sorry we want to mobilize the apex of the sacrum with the tenar eminence then a patient have mostly on the posterior pelvic tilt we want to treat the ilium i am not shown about the ilium here ilium we want to treat that is the patient have a uh, in ilium that is as a manipulator we used to say in ilium that is the ilium will override of the sacrum first you want to treat the ilium then we want to mobilize the sacrum for a anterior climb so this will be the nutrition the counter nutrition man patient for the sacrum okay thank you the next question is from neelima rodda okay that has been explained from annie linda how much role of anatomical trains in this manipulation any specific chain yeah yeah i said right uh, in that uh, in the functional manipulation we are mostly dealing on the functional train the functional train means uh, example if a patient of upper cross syndrome we want to treat the anterior and posterior region by releasing and uh, mobilizing the soft tissue that is here we are very much uh, uh, should be no, we have a knowledge of functional train then only we can manipulate that is directly proportional if you treat the functional if you treat the manipulation the functional train will be in a proper track so the patient will not have a pain here uh, it's not like a anterior posterior and the lateral trains we are not concentrating we are concentrating more on functional uh, train so it's directly in uh, uh, directly proportional to the manipulation okay the next question is from sweta murugan explain about spinal mobility test spinal mobility test what we do in functional right 
फंक्शन मैनिपुलेशन और आई डोंट नो ओके इसका या फाइनल मोबिलिटी टेस्ट वी यूज्ड टू डू एस अ यूनिवर्सल मेथड सो वी आर गोइंग टू चेक फॉर जस्ट अ फॉरवर्ड फ्लेक्शन एंड एक्सटेंशन ऑफ होल स्पाइन दैट अ पेशेंट हैव एनी फ्लैट बैक वी वांट टू चेक फॉर द थोरको लंबार रीजन or uh, the patient uh, flexion from cervical we say the cervical then cervico thoracic region then thoracic then thoraco lumbar then lumbar sac so we want to check for the flexion if any uh, abnormality here we are not going to measure any range of motion because it's a functional technique functional method we are going to check for the uh, coarctation of the all the joints all the muscles in the joints where it should be a proper alignment if there is any abnormal then we want to go for the specific uh, local assessment then we want to manipulate here we are not going to do any plumb test or slr or any in the constant test we are not going to do any test here we are going to assess functionally and manipulate okay the next question is from professor satya raja how do we decide at to release and do soft soft tissue manipulation or joint manipulation kindly explain it's a good question actually see so we want to differentiate that as i said the patient uh, first uh, the uh, the techniques i have said all the concept right the concept is very important here if the patient have dysfunctional dysfunctional painful definitely there will be a soft tissue and uh, uh, orthopedic uh, uh, vertebral problem will be there or any orth- arthrometic problem will be there if there is a dysfunctional no painful we can treat directly over the vertebral body that is the ortho that is going to can move probably the joints if there is a functional and painful functional and painful we can treat only the soft tissue that is there is no restriction so there will be movement only the fascia or a soft tissue will be a problem which creating a pain so functional and painful we can consider only for soft tissue dysfunctional and painful we can consider as soft tissue along with the joint problem is there so we want to uh, apply the concept here to differentiate where we want to do which mobilization thank you the next question is from abdili motarwala there are some causes of vertebral artery dissection due to spinal manipulation how do we avoid that yeah that's what i said uh, that also we already explained but see uh, the patient uh, the patient have a claudication claudication means i said the patient of previous history or a current rta or any severe trauma like whiplash injury we want to check for a x ray or a scan whether the patient has gone for any uh, claudication vascular compromises so in case the patient have old history of uh, power loss or the patient may have uh, uh, myelopathy or myeloplasia definitely we are not going to manipulate that should be diagnosed clinically in the case because the, i already have said the green flag should be a acute or recent pain muscular pain then you can go for a manipulation if you have a doubt is in a considered as yellow flag you go for a investigation for x ray or mri to finalize whether there is a vascular compromises motor and the sensory and the motor claudications we can assess physically by special test and other tests jog tests but when you are going for a compromises of vascular there will be a less uh, clinical features can be seen so definitely you go for a uh, investigations like mri or uh, ncv or uh, uh, x ray is very important before doing that that comes under red flag so you want to know what which condition uh, you want to know all the conditions clinical features then only we can go for a manipulation manipulation is a technique but knowledge is very important to dif- do the differential diagnosis go for a manipulation everyone should not do manipulation without knowing their uh regional anatomy, surface anatomy and regional anatomy and the radiology if you are not knowing that definitely don't go for manipulation blindly manipulating will create a problem thank you the next question is from youtube viewer Pra- kumar praveen in si dysfunction several inflammation manipulation can be done yes sorry yeah. in si dysfunction severe infl- inflammation manipulation can be done can we yeah, do definitely uh, uh, manipulation in severe si dysfunction that's a question yeah i yeah, i said yeah yeah that's what i said again again uh, same point we are going for see the patient are see painful dysfunctional painful dysfunction you want to wait you should not treat directly so we want to find the root cause the si joint problem is not because directly over the si joint 
definitely it may be iliac psoas tightness or thoracolumbar tightness or lumbar uh, dysfunction or it may be a hip dysfunction so we want to assess these areas we want to know which area is dysfunctional non painful area dysfunctional non painful area we want to address we should not treat that dysfunctional painful area first we want to address the dysfunctional non painful area around the problematic region that is as you said sacroiliac joint it may be a uh, uh, it may be a piriformis or a gamelai or a, uh, it band or it may be a, a thoracolumbar region dysfunctions or lumbar or nutation as counter nutation problems we want to assess everything you can find the nearby dysfunctional non painful painful area we want to address and manipulate that then in the next sitting you can find the sacroiliac joint will have less pain what i did today the patient have shoulder problem i am not done the shoulder mobilization i done the thoracic and the scapula so the patient have 90% relief now next session you will manipulate the shoulder so this is the methodology any joint can be treated but we should not address in the first day we should be address the localized local other areas where there be hello audible yeah audible can i go for the next question rupesh yes, audible sir. yes sir uh, yeah. please go the for the next question. question okay the next question is from uh, fitness and you have rehab youtube uh, viewer pratap shankar hi sir in this assessment part have centralization peripheralization and local is this same as mckinsey mobilization no it's not definitely it's not uh, same as mckinsey mckinsey we will do mckinsey will do on the spine over the uh, over the spine region but here the concept is from the peripheral also for example the patient have uh, pain over the shoulder we want to consider as a shoulder as a local and uh, scapula and uh, thoracic and uh, cervical region we can as a peripheral that is over the nearby areas can may be areas that is sorry peripheral is over the elbow wrist and every but everything every areas and the central is over the cervical and uh, lumbar region but in the mckinsey we will address only over the superior and inferior spinous and we mobilize there that's so totally different actually okay the next question is from jitender Uh, sir thanks for the presentation you said that the hemangioma and osteopenia are red flags are contraindications to manipulation so does it imply that we need okay. an mri or x ray respectively beforehand in order to select a patient for manipulation yeah so in my practice in my practice we are very safe and often since, since we are practicing in the prime area uh, and we are have a contact with other practitioners they are very much safe so as this my advice that as a clinician to go for a minimum x ray minimum x ray for a, before manipulating is very safe or else if you are very much the acute case like of if injury can go directly saying you may be a carcinoma patient or a tuberculosis patient so definitely you are going for a minimum this is i x ray minimum or if you are in a doubt okay uh can we go for next question hello yeah hello yeah you can go yes the next question is from preeti does manipulation can lead to hypermobility in spine definitely not definitely not the functional manipulation since we are uh, checking for the local uh, as i said the, uh, the in the in the methodology we are saying the last point also that is functional non painful area we are not going to touch that is if there is no problem no dysfunction we are not going to touch no possibility of hypermobility of 
vertebral body or joint we are going to treat only the affected area yeah? that to non painful area if you are doing more than that the patient shows sign of pain definitely you may start uh, the real patient jagdish your voice is breaking too much actually the patient definitely there will be high probability not you should not treat a normal patient that is you should not even man patient for a model definitely change for a demo understood also your voice was Sorry, breaking no? actually we couldn't hear your answers there for the last question oh, last question right now yeah it's clear now voice is clear now please explain once again okay. yeah so as manipulation can lead to hypermobility in spine yeah so as we said initially we should not do manipulation for a non painful functional areas as a last point we need to explain functional areas and non painful area we should not do manipulation if you do manipulation for that area definitely that hypermobility is possible that's why we are not the model, demo with the model patient okay if you are doing a manipulation for a dysfunctional area and the pain pain painful area definitely the patient may show sign that so a sign of pain as increased pain so definitely there is no possibility of going for hypermobility if you are treating, uh, unless you are treating a normal uh, layman normal individual for a manipulation technique so there is 100% 90% there will be no chance of getting hypermobility okay mm, there is another question from our fitness and rehab india youtube viewer pragati singh sir explain the stroking and pressure manipulation manipulation please so stroking and pressure manipulation we are not doing in uh, uh, functional manipulations definitely that comes under the uh, mulligan and uh, maitland techniques that is uh, totally different here i am not uh, using that technique okay thank you and the last question is from anshu sharma can we give manipulation any bone disease definitely not i said already right there is uh, no inflammatory inflammatory conditions and uh, infectious conditions or contra contraindications like tuberculosis malignancy or any phages disease definitely is highly contraindicated that may be a spread or maybe a fractures or possible case so definitely is not advised okay uh, we will uh, conclude it now and uh, i would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, of today's session and uh, i would like to thank exrx india team members uh dr uh, rupesh and uh, professor duna and i thank, thank our uh, resource person dr jagdishan for a wonderful session though there were uh, some network issues still he managed to teach us the techniques and uh, especially when to do and what to do and what not to do uh, in the spinal manipulation uh, technique and uh, i thank all our associations uh, for uh, helping us to Uh, to the session uh, i thank uh, dr venkata session from uh, stimulus physiotherapy and fitness clinic pune maharashtra india for his uh, uh, help to run the show and uh, our exrx india team members too thank you everyone bye bye good night